Hello, it's Diane with Diane's Blue Hearts and Butterflies. I have found another card. This one was made on the internet by Cindy Whitlow, and she uh, is from a different stamping group. Um, but I saw her card, and it really inspired me to um, get out the Geared Up Garage and the brick and mortar uh, embossing folder and make a card that was similar to hers using the products from Stampin' Up. And I also used the Garage Gears dies to be able to cut out this Happy Father's Day image. You could easily use the car, uh, there's a Best Dad, uh, there's some other items, and there's many of those things that could be um, cut out using this um, die set. It also has a grouping of gears that you could use also if you wanted to on the inside of the card. Um, however you wanted to use that. And then the brick and mortar um, embossing folder really gives a nice image for the bricks. So let's get started with this card. Um, the pieces that we will that I will be using get them out here is a uh, basic black, the um, basic gray and real red are the color schemes that I went with. Um, the base is four and a quarter by eleven, and I scored that in half at five and a half, and then. There's a real red um, cardstock that I cut for the inside using the largest stitched rectangle. This is approximately three and three quarters by five and an eighth. The basic gray for the inside I did cut with the stitched rectangle, the second largest stitched rectangle. This one's approximately three and three eighths by four and three quarters, and those will go on the inside. I also had a uh, two pieces of the real red cardstock that is four and a quarter by one and a half, and a basic gray cardstock that is four and a quarter by three and a half, and then I had a scrap of basic black cardstock so I could stamp the Father's Day emblem on this. I stamped it in Versamark ink and used the silver embossing powder to um, create the little label or emblem that's going to go on the front and uh, so I've already done that ahead of time and then these other pieces let me show you what I had done I've gone ahead and done the embossing on the card front so basically you just take and line up this the front of the card inside of the embossing folder. This has a really neat line along here so it helped me when I put it in here to line it up along with that line and then I just lined it up again with the score line that I had up here and then I ran that through the embossing machine and it created that really cool brick layer effect on the front. I also ran the um, piece of basic gray, the uh, three and a half inch long one, through this folder in the same direction. I wanted my bricks to go this way so I put it in so that the three and a half was along this line. And I've done that to both of those pieces. Um, and on this one, I wanted to have that kind of grungy effect, so, um, and like she did, she tore these on here. And you can tear it before or after you have run it through the embossing machine. The trick with tearing, in order to get that rough edge, is you tear toward the front of whatever you're going to be doing um, uh, or showing on the front of your card and you just put it between your fingers and then just kind of tear and you can tear it at any angle that you wish as much or as little as you want 
and it just creates a nice rough kind of an edge on this um, piece and so I'm going to do that here and if you need to come back and tear a little bit more you can and then these two red pieces are actually going to go on the top and the bottom of this piece and so you're going to want to kind of mimic the same type of tear and in order to create that layered torn look and so I'm just going to also tear toward the front this will become the front of that piece and then it will go up here and then the other one you will tear and this is along the long side one of the long sides the other one it won't matter because it's going to be behind that gray piece and so this one would go back here and I may want to tear a little bit more here and there to create a little more interest and then what I did to give it that grunge look is I took the Memento Tuxedo Black ink and a um, sponge. Uh, I like to have create a little holder and I cut my sponges into six pieces and uh, then I staple these on just so that I have something to hold on to. And then you just kind of rub those ends or those edges and it helps to bring out that uh, kind of torn line to make it a little more defined and I also rubbed the um, the uh, sides and then just to give it a little bit more of a kind of a grungy look I just kind of went over a few of the bricks areas to give it a little more kind of a well used well worn look and then I took the red pieces and I also went over and rubbed those edges as well to create a little bit more of that dimension. And I did that to both of these pieces. And I also did that to the stitched rectangle pieces that are going on the inside of the card, as you can see here. I've gone around each one of those to create that same thing. And you can stamp an image or put some other things on the inside if you wish. And so this is basically how I did this. Another thing that I saw that she had done, uh, that uh, Cindy Whitlow had done, was take kind of a sanding block, a uh, nail file, something, and just to get this where it's not quite so silvery, she just kind of ran over it with some type of sanding, which is why I wasn't real worried about my embossing job that it kind of missed a few places because it just kind of adds to that grungy look and character so that not everything is all shiny. So that is also what I did there. Then I just took the red pieces and put some adhesive, kind of on the front side but down at the bottom so that I could adhere these behind this gray piece. And there's kind of no real right or wrong. It's um, just kind of how it feels to you, how it looks to you. And I just line this up and glue it down. And then this one I just adhered straight to the card base because I didn't want too much dimension for this to go through the mail and I knew I was going to use dimensionals behind the emblem on the front. And then I just kind of lined this up with the sides and put it kind of in the middle of here. Then I also adhered my basic gray to the real red for the inside. And 
and then I adhered that on the inside of the card. I was trying to go for some really quick and easy cards for the uh, June stamping class that I have to share some fast and simple cards that really kind of have an impact. And then I just simply took and placed some dimensionals behind this emblem, making sure that there's plenty there to for this to go through the mail and it wouldn't um, be squashed when it gets there. And then I just adhered that to the front. And like I said, you could always add some gears or wrenches or um, any other kind of thing inside or behind this. But I thought this was quite just a, a simple, easy card for a guy. And it kind of just has a really strong impact. So um, I hope that you will check out the other cards that I am doing for the sharing for my uh, June class to be able to enjoy. Thank you for visiting me.